All right. Welcome to Chapter 1 of What is Life, a book that uh, we're using for the uh, Principles of Biology, Bio 110. And it's a good book. It, uh, it, it's thought-provoking, and that's what we want. The learning objectives for this uh, section will be uh, defining the science of biology and really sort of putting within the framework of scientific thinking and hopefully by the end to, of this that you'll uh, won't be afraid of reading scientific literature and being able to uh, dig into things to find the truth uh, about statements and uh, things that you may read in, in the news uh, as it pertains to science related topics and it's better to make a scientific type of decision than an emotional one. I can tell you from my own experience that pretty much every time I make an emotional experience it uh, turns out I uh, regret it. So um, these are some of the, the, the topics that we're going to talk about and let's get started. So thinking scientifically in this chapter we're going to explore how to think uh, about how to use the knowledge that the scientists uh, obtained through the scientific method and this this is a, a widely accepted and that sort of thing but it's not the end all it, it's at least a systematic way uh, to examine something now intuition and those things I you know I, I can't discount those those are important uh, but it's always nice to have some sort of reference in order to make a decision and scientific thinking certainly will help uh, get you there. So let's let's look about how we we do that now. Of course, there's a negative connotation about you know science and scientists, and of course with the pocket protectors and the, all those sorts of things. And you know it's it's better to make a wise decision based on what you feel. Uh, there's preponderance of evidence, just like in a court case. Uh, that supports uh, a particular claim or or not. So we're going to look into that. So there are certain topics that come up that uh, you may have uh, heard on radios or news or just in conversation. And those are the things that I really want to kind of look at with you is uh, the cell phones causing brain cancer, that sort of thing. Um, Bacterial hand soaps, antibacterial, are be, uh, are they better than regular soap? In, in some cases, some of them uh, have been associated with causing uh, skin cancer. So, uh, why is morning breath stinky? Well, I think common sense kind of tells us that. Um, why is it easier to remember gossip than physics equations? Blood doping, does it really improve athletic performance? Uh, why is it easier for infants or young to learn complex languages than a college student to learn biology? Well, I think that's a question I, I don't particularly agree with, but anyhow. Uh, so science in itself is just not uh, a body of knowledge or facts to memorize, and I really want to emphasize that. I, I want to relate it to things that we observe, and, and here are some of the explanations about what we observe. And uh, and I put that out there, and it's really more to make you think uh, critically, and uh, to explore and to observe. See, that's the big thing. Is I, I want you to observe what's going on around you. When you find certain facts about what's going on around you, uh, it's going to interest you. Uh, and that's through observation and if you know more about you know when you're just walking on grass for an example that there's a species of fungus that are there um, that or fungi that um, that are uh, there that helps facilitate oxygen uptake and roots and things and then con and then the 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 uh, the uh, fungus then um, absorbs some of the sugars and things that the plants provide in order it is a give and take and there's all sorts of these sorts of relationships going on and it's just an example uh, it's probably a lousy one but it's an example of, of being observant and then 
reflecting on, wow, gee, I wonder what's going on, and that sort of thing from a biological point of view. And um, I always uh, enjoy those sorts of things. Uh, science is an intellectual activity, encompasses observation, description, experimentation, and then our feeble attempt, and I say that as human, um, explanation of natural phenomenon. Uh, now, the thing is that uh, we have, uh, if you read literature from way back when Sir Isaac Newton and, and the like, and they believed in, in, and a lot of them at that time believed in spontaneous generation, things just appeared because of their understanding and knowledge. And then through time, those were dispelled. You know, things just don't spontaneously form, they grow because now we have microscopes and that sort of thing. And it really helps us to discover and understand what's going on. And it ultimately, and this is where I want to go with this course, is that you can make better decisions about what you put in your body and think about why we do this and that and these and those. And uh, it's just better to be informed. And you all have that power uh, to discern that. So in the wizardry and the testing and all of those things to some folks, it may appear as well, you know, the scientists, uh, you know, make up stuff and they do this. Well, that may be the, may be the case for some, but uh, most of the scientists I've been associated with in my career, uh, I'm always in awe of the prowess and their ability to observe and uh, use their gut feel as to uh, coming up with experiments to test hypotheses and things like that. It's a lot of fun and uh, this is my goal. It's, it's uh, going to try to turn you to the dark side to like biology, but we'll see. So how do you know what is true? And every time you go down the impulse aisle at a grocery store or Walmart or Kmart or something like that, uh, it, they, they always try to make uh, a sales, you know, the last effort sales pitch. And they'll have some horrendous types of claims and various things. Or you go into a drugstore and you see a product that uh, promises all sorts of interesting and weird things. And, uh, and they're kind of playing to the fact that these are things that you may want or to occur and that sort of thing. But the product really is not uh, either tricky language doesn't really make that claim or they make the claim and the FDA hasn't caught them yet or something like that. So uh, the idea is you can apply some of your knowledge. You can, you can look it up uh, in the scientific literature, find out what the active ingredients are or uh, how Cocoa Krispies can support your child's immunity. Uh, you know, and a lot of times I think there was a court case over that where the FDA uh, kind of put their foot down. You can't make claims like that. Although they have to have science to prove it, and then you have to go through the, the process for advertising, whatever that is. Uh, I've never had to do that. But science, and the key two words I really want you to kind of relate with science is systematic study. And that's important because uh, it's systematic. In other words, you follow a procedure. And that way, everyone that follows that procedure can compare their results from whatever. And it may not be the best method in the world, a scientific method, refined or whatever, but it is a method that you can use as a measure if done properly from one experiment to another. And you can assure that, that you can try to reproduce it and that sort of thing. And that's what we bring to the table with science is a systematic uh, uh, aspect of it. Uh, so we have areas, of course, in the sciences, and we have disciplines within the sciences like veterinary science or medical science, or uh, uh, you can have ecology science, uh, astronomy science, that sort of thing. And the body of knowledge of a particular subject, uh, biology, the Biology part means the study of biology or bio living things, chemistry, physics, and uh, the list goes on. So biology is, of course, the study of life or living things. And we, we look at the chemical and physical basis for life and its maintenance. How do organisms use genetic information? 
uh, that's uh, an area of biotechnology and the various things that uh, is just exploding. Uh, I was fortunate to be part of in the 70s the sort of the revolution of the genetics and we're finding all sorts of things it was really exciting and at the same time microelectronics or computers were taking off and to experience these two big booms at the same time concurrently it was quite a time it still is uh, to live and see um, so how do organisms use this information and these sorts of things that we observe to grow and reproduce that's what's interesting um, the diverse forms of life on earth we're finding new forms all the time uh, areas that once were thought to be sterile or could not support life at let's say at the Mariana Trench the deepest part of the ocean that we know of uh, and we found life and uh, we're finding it's ubiquitous it's everywhere how do organisms interact with each other that's fascinating the interactions of these microorganisms for an example where I spend most of my life studying as a microbiologist is the organisms uh, that I've dealt with and how they communicate with each other is is just uh, jaw-dropping and uh, how they interact with the environment now this is true for every living thing and it's it's more than just scratching the surface it's digging into it and you see these very uh, uh, involved relationships and it's, it's amazing. So scientific literacy is one of my main, main points and I have an assignment. Uh, you get to choose one of two papers um, and I, I probably should include more but uh, right now it's, it's just to get you introduced to uh, reading scientific literature and that uh, you should never be afraid to do that it's knowing how to tear one of those papers apart and really the very first thing is just to read the abstract and convince yourself you want to read the paper or not and so uh, or it tells you unlike a story or a um, mystery novel uh, scientific literature tells you who done it right up front and so you can decide well here's some results and if it's something that sparks an interest or it's something you're looking into then you want to find out how did they reach that conclusion the paper will tell you and that's really scientific literacy and the most common question I get of course is oh we, you know we hear about fake news and this and fake science or this or whatever how do you find the truth well even journals you have to be skeptical and now they're forced to put their disclaimers no you know if you're you're uh, talking about some sort of product and you happen to work for that company well you might be a little biased and I can tell you stories uh, I, I used to work for a company that sold probiotics and we'll talk about what those are and there was a lot of pressure of course to make the product look as best it could but as a scientist you have to state the truth and and facts and that's it and there's no politics or spin or anything like that I'll leave the marketing folks for that but uh, anyhow uh, you get what I'm saying here it, thinking scientifically gives you that additional tool to evaluate if this is claim or whatever it is is true or not and it's uh, uh, I'd say as it says here increasingly important in our lives it is uh, you're just inundated I can't even keep up I used to, one of the areas that I studied I was interested in femur head necrosis in children and there's a microorganism that causes that uh, uh, the degradation of the top of the, the hip bone there and that that field has exploded there's so much information and I can't even keep up with that and it's just so it's important uh, to do the best you can when you dig into something uh, the emphasis on objective observation is that's the key being objective not being influenced by outcomes that you want or wish lists or well gee if I state this I'm gonna lose my job well you know that's that's part of the job you have to do when you sign on uh, for science in itself uh, is you just have to be objective and then you do uh, experimentation and then the results speak that that's it all you have to do is report it and that's science and so um, the literacy is important and that's understanding how to find the truth really that's the kind of way I kind of define it these days 
why are unsaturated fats healthier for you than saturated fats now we're going to talk about labels on foods and things like that i'm going to try to help uh allow you to uh, systematically tear apart some of the vocabulary that's used in a lot of times and you're fine if you look at it systematically that uh, not memorize but systematically learn some of these terms and I'm going to be posting uh, a document for biology that uh, goes through some of the Latin roots of some of the words that we might be using throughout the semester. Instead of just springing it on you at first, I wanted you to understand why I would have a document like that. And it's all part of my approach for systematic learning. If you're interested in a medical field, I highly recommend medical terminology because that uh, allows you to dig into the words and the language of medicine that you're not memorizing, you're systematically utilizing a, a form of language that is very systematic like Latin or Greek and those things help you a lot. So I'll, I'll be posting a, a document that has some Latin derivatives for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, allergies, why do they strike children from clean homes more than children with dirty homes? Um, why do new agricultural pests appear faster than new uh, uh, pesticides and so why are they resistant how does this sort of thing uh, work and so that gets into some some spiritual things as far as well it's the need uh, to survive and these organisms have mechanisms we're going to talk about on how they can change so they can adapt because if uh, you don't know how to adapt you uh, go extinct and so that's not a good thing so uh, there's a lot of things and I, I put a picture up here uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes using uh, 23 and me and getting genetic information and uh, so you can understand we're going to talk about biotechnology and what this sort of test will do and reveal but it also has some political implications as to is, is it possible the insurance company can get that information and then your rates would go up if there was a problem or something like that? Um, and so I'm not exclusively limiting our discussions in this class to just the science. There are ramifications, but it's better to understand the decision process of the information and what could be obtained and then evaluate it from a, uh, a, a non-science pers perspective like politics and things like that. I hope that makes sense. So in having biological literacy, uh, you have the ability to process scientific inquiry, to think creatively about things that are concerned to you. Uh, and then you can communicate to others. Now, in a nice way, if somebody says something and they haven't done the time uh, to do the reading and that sort of thing, that's OK. Uh, but what you can do is say, hey, look, I read this and this and this, and here's some articles or here is uh, some links that you can check out and and formulate your own decision those are the type of debates and discussions that uh, should not raise ire or tempers and that sort of thing it's it, no what you what you want to do is to be as as methodical as possible and you want people to arrive at their decisions and their point of view based on uh, whatever evidence and things that they have access to and part of our job is to try to share with others things and experiences that you may have that is relevant for the discussion so um, that's the whole thing is you want to integrate these sorts of things in your decision process and as, uh, try to, to stay away from emotion or you know the lemming effect where everyone's thinking the same and everyone's just following but don't really know why uh, no, I want you to be a critical thinker and think on your own two feet. That's that's important. Biological issues affects everybody. So there's not a person in this class that I hope in some way will benefit from discussions about things that we put in our mouth or what's the health effect of this. And I, I want you to look at these. If there's some topic or something that's of importance because of your family or whatever, I will give you extra credit if you were per to pursue the basis, the scientific basis of whatever that is, and share that uh, with the class. And 
if those are to me authentic learning processes because these are the things you need to do uh, if, to really critically think about something is to read the literature talk with others even contact experts hey you know you can pick up the phone you don't know these people but it's okay a lot of scientists love to talk about their science and so don't ever hesitate to call someone if you feel like you need to get some more information to make a decision they always tell you to get a second opinion when you're going to a doctor um, and you say well gee you know that's expensive and that sort of thing well going down the wrong path can you imagine how expensive that would be and and life-threatening it might be so it's it's important to make these wise decisions and uh, to uh, attain this biological literacy and and you already have it now uh, I've just put a label on it and now I'm going to show just from my perspective how you might want to attack some literature and now a whole wealth of things like uh, you can do searches on uh, Google Scholar uh, that's a great resource for looking at scientific literature Google's engine is now applied to the scientific literature and it's called Google Scholar and you can Google it <laughs> and uh, utilize it and it's amazing it's just more information more detailed so the idea is I want to refine during this course your use of scientific inquiry to think about so I'm going to be doing some case studies uh, along the way a little bit more emphasis on case studies you may not be aware of what a case study is but all it is is applied science that's essentially what a case study is you get to see in a real world a cause and effect with an individual human animal environment whatever and it's a study on that particular case or whatever it is and you get to apply the science what's nice about that is it gives you a chance to be creative creative think you can do literature searches you can discuss with others in your class and you can formulate your own opinion we're going to be doing that uh, many times and I'm de-emphasizing de the exams uh, per se and giving you more credit for this type of critical thinking because that I'm putting my money where my mouth is as far as uh, uh, how important I think that is and I'm going to discuss that in a, a video I'm going to be releasing soon for my students uh, so you want to be able to communicate what you've learned and how you learned it to others and the idea is you want to incorporate these meth methods but when you talk with others someone might say gee you know I saw this paper or unrelated or it was uh, named something different have you looked at this it's an amazing thing that happens and the idea is uh, you're growing all the time science does not stand still it's constantly expanding and getting more information more insight you look at this and it may change in how you might ask a question and then that results in more type of experimentation and it just feeds and feeds and feeds and that's really what I'm after uh, to try to sell so how do we trust the packaging claims that companies make uh, and this again is sort of an applied sense of the scientific literacy and scientific thinking um, and as you can see in the background here uh, there's trading going on and what drives the world and everyone here you know I don't have to say it but I'm going to say it is that uh, money drives the world of finances it's profits it's selling it's you know it, it, in a capitalist society that's sort of how it works and it's been pretty doggone successful almost to the point where uh, almost too successful some would argue um, I um, I stay out of those types of uh, arguments because I know nothing about uh, the politics and things I, I just like pure science it's my thing but people this is what really gets me uh, mad is when a CEO goes out politically and says uh, people are not scientifically minded enough to be able to understand a clinical study and uh, that is so false it it rings um, to the point where maybe they don't want you to follow that because they want to sell you things and have you believe things that aren't really true and all I got to say to you is don't fall for that because you are scientifically minded enough and you can understand these studies and I, I just picked up my magic magical wand and just uh, 
uh, put pixie dust on you, you now are scientifically minded enough to be able to understand a clinical study. And as we go through this, you, I'll prove it to you, and uh, we'll have some examples for that. And so when I, I see these, uh, that statement was motivated by uh, trying to make a better quarter, I guess, and sell people things and assuming that we're stupid, and we're not. In fact, a lot of people vote with their feet when products come out. Uh, there's a lot of examples for that. If you could think of one, I'll give you one just briefly. Uh, there's uh, gluten that's in foods. We're going to talk about what gluten is. But the gluten in foods today isn't the same gluten that your parents uh, consumed when they ate products. Now, gluten is a form of a link sugar and all this stuff. We'll get into it. But it's more antigenic. In other words, it causes an immune response. And so now you see a lot of food products that say gluten-free. Well, here is the public making a decision. No, I, I don't want to be... Uh, having inflammation issues when I eat gluten. Uh, I want to eat gluten free so my joints don't hurt and well I'll live longer because inflammation for anyone is bad. And we're going to talk about those sorts of things. And I don't know if that interests you but uh, it certainly interests me and I, I do a fair amount of time looking into these things. Uh, misleading evidence can obscure the truth. This is uh, rampant uh, these days. And to be honest with you, from what I've read in previous, you know, before my time, if you can believe it, um, as I say, there, I have socks older than most of you. Uh, I've been around a little bit, and but not back in the days of the covered wagons and things. That does predate me. But they used to sell snake oils and things off the back to make a profit. And they make all sorts of claims. And, well, we're kind of in the same kind of, boat today so what is different is that you have the tools now to discern and debunk these things you can google it and, and again everything you find you got to be careful of the source and that's why a referee journal or something is is a better one and you can make good decisions but pseudoscience is individuals make scientific sounding claims that are not supported by trustworthy or methodical science studies uh, four out of five dentists uh, agree that chewing this this type of gum doesn't cause, you know, it helps clean your teeth or something. Uh, and they don't offer any evidence or they actually looked into that four out of five and there was no study. It was just a comment that they made. And uh, they kind of, um, uh, that got ugly for a while. Uh, anecdotal observations based on one or two few or, uh, or a few observations and you can't do that scientifically you, you know you want the preponderance of the evidence and uh, the idea is you want people to reproduce your work to give it validity and eh, more believable if it's only been done let's say with six subjects uh, and uh, it's only been tested one time versus a study where it's been reproduced 200 times and over half a million uh, individuals were tested, that would have a higher validity and I would tend to believe that data. Uh, and superstitions, um, you know, it's, it's, it does ring, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. There are families that have su certain superstitions that kind of pass through and there may be an element of truth to it, to, to whatever the, some of those things are. But uh, just taking it at face value and saying, okay, well, mom always said this and this. Well, that may be true, but I would be uh, driven to, to try to find out, well, what did the science say? What are the papers that looked at this sort of thing? And that's really what I'm saying. I'm not saying disbelieve everything that are superstitions. I'm just saying, no, just look into it and see what facts you can find and you can make a decision. Now, there are some things that have come up in the literature like can vaccines cause uh, autism or anecdotal evidence and fraudulent reporting cause a health scare as a result of that and which it did and if you look at some uh, the new term these days I don't have to remind you but from my perspective the contrast is pretty uh, strong is that we have a whistleblower and that's that's great you know if they see wrongdoing they don't want to lose their job and, that's, and there's laws that protect that and that sort of thing but the whistleblowers will come out and make statements and then uh, whoever is involved that has some financial interest will try to debunk it or uh, shut them down or whatever uh, 
so you know you have to weigh that and so if you look what the whistleblower is saying and the evidence that they say compare it to what other uh, that's really where it comes down to and uh, I just want you to look at it that way um, and autism is a big deal and finding out you know that the incidence rate of autism from when I was a child versus to today there's a huge difference now granted some of that's due to the definition change and all that but still the incidence rate is really high and so maybe there is a cause and effect and um, it, it's the more we understand about it the more that uh, we can we can uh, work with it so um, the international scientific community say and stated that there's no link between vaccines and autism now I'll just say at face value I don't have a opinion one way or the other but when I see these sorts of things I immediately think about well I used to I did a vaccine in the veterinary side and I produced a vaccine and so I know a little bit about them and the link between vaccines there's huge money in vaccines I just want you to understand that when you sell something and you get it to the population and we have 7.4 billion people on the planet you know that's a pretty nice size market for something like COVID-19 vaccine that you see what I'm saying uh, so there's a huge motivation and when somebody says something negative about a vaccine and nobody wants their children uh, you know willingly to get autistic uh, you know it, it's something you can deal with and that sort of thing and they're wonderful children and all that but the thing is as parents you want to make the best decisions about well, well maybe I should hold off and we're going to talk about vaccinations and we're going to talk about vaccines and uh, I want you to formulate your opinion it's an important one it's it's one that when you have children you got to make a decision for your children and you want to try to make the best informed one you can scientific literacy will help you do that and so those are the things I'm talking about so uh, why does it appear that there are more autistic uh, autism cases than ever before well there's better identification changes in the diagnostic process and coincidental links between uh, autism and vaccines that's the uh, at least the way the book has been published and talks about that and I say well for you you read it and you say yes I'm not ever going to hold you to the fact that uh, one way or the other on that I want you to draw your own conclusion based on what you say so we could hold a debate uh, virtually uh, I don't know I've never done it if you're interested you let me know I'll set out a poll on that but uh, anyhow you see what I'm saying it's it's really interesting that we can we can discuss these things without spitting and throwing coming to discussions with baseball bats and things no no we can discuss these things and we can agree to disagree that's okay um, that's what I'm after and I want you to um, choose your battles careful carefully and uh, and you spend your time on things that are of most interest to you and I'm hoping that uh, at least uh, this first chapter we're going to talk about and you can dig into one of those two papers and just read through it and pull out things that are important or something for you now you have a, a reference that you can always uh, refer to and send other people to and that sort of thing and then you can dig into the references from the reference so you can get even more of a background on it because every uh, paper will give you a little bit of a a literature search and which is really cool if somebody else has done your work um, the uh, organizations that we've come to trust the FDA the CDC you know they're run by people and then people of course are you know motivated by all sorts of things money and political power and all these sorts of things and sometimes uh, or may, maybe a lot of times uh, things uh, tend to get corrupt and I just want you to understand that that's that's a possibility so again we just read the literature and we try to figure out the best that we can now this is a uh, from World Mercury Project Robert Kennedy's organization Kennedy hopes that new evidence and fresh look at criminal misconduct will re result in law enforcement action rigorous transparent vaccine safety science and safer vaccines uh, Robert F Kennedy which is from the famous uh, family of, of the Kennedy's president and 
uh, and the like. Um, the team outlined various criminal acts of the part of the employees and consultants at the CDC whose questionable ethics and scientific fraud has resulted in untrustworthy vaccine safety. So we kind of depend on the CDC to give us the, just the bulb, raw, factual data. And if they're spinning it, that's not good. If, in other words, somebody's getting paid to do this or that. It could happen, I'm sure. Uh, I could give you story after stories that I've read over, or uh, like artificial sweeteners that got uh, FDA would not approved, and all of a sudden uh, got approved because somebody was paid through the Senate, that, or whatever, you know, influence those decisions. I'm not naive that it happens, and so you need to think about. And I do know that using mercury-based preservatives that's called thimerosal is not a good thing uh, for it does make the um, pro or the the elements of a vaccine more conducive to create an immune response that's that's great but in doing so it can cause some damage because not only is it related to the vaccine component but maybe other things that are in your body at the time that could cause uh, immune response and that and a lot of times it's not good so anyhow new england journal of medicine in 2002 and pediatrics is another big journal in 2003 uh, the research is published and so you can read these things for yourself and and make this uh, your own uh, determination the Department of Justice in, uh, indicted Thorson on 22 counts of wire fraud and money laundering for stealing over a million dollars of CDC grant money earmarked for autism research so it happens and we just recently heard about uh, COVID-19 and there's some issues with universities in China all this stuff and it, it, it goes on. All I'm saying is, and I'm sure there's no one that's listening to this that's naive to the point that says, well, whatever the CDC says, I believe. Um, I'd say, you know, I'm from uh, what, uh, what state it was, uh, the show me state, right? Um, show me the facts, right? And I'll go from there. Uh, so there's papers that you can read that talk about... Uh, one position or another and they could be motivated for whatever and the idea is it's great to read these pieces and all that I, I'm not going to knock it but what I want to do is to read the science and that's um, what you want to do and and uh, just reading about what somebody else has said about a particular piece of work or paper may not be well it's their interpretation perhaps or they may take a little bit of liberty and leave out other things that are in the paper. Although what I said was true, it's there. Yeah, but you left out a whole lot of other facts too. And so you've got to go back to the source. And I'll give you a really quick case. Uh, one of the things my, my own physician said, you know, he knows that I'm big on vitamins and taking supplements and uh, various other things. And you know, I do a fair amount of reading, and I try. To, and he says, "Well, they recently just published a paper saying taking vitamins actually shortens your lifespan." And it was based on a big study, and so and that was true. It's what the article he gave me the reference to the article because I asked for it. But I went farther. I went to the original scientific paper that published that, and what I found was there's this new phenomenon that's been going on, is that they take an existing piece of research and they data mine it for other things. So this was a particular case where there was a huge number of people, three, four, five hundred, somewhere there, I forget, and they're all being treated for cancer. So it was within the group of these patients that were being treated for cancer that if they were asked if they took vitamins or not and then they related it to death and you know what that's bogus uh, that is just I would look at that and say uh, well first of all okay that may be true in a population of patients that are undergoing chemotherapy and radiation therapy and taking vitamins for whatever reason may cause early death or maybe the cancer caused the early death you know um, that probably isn't the best so when I showed that to the, my my physician uh, boy was he embarrassed he said well you know I was just going it happens to everybody I you know I didn't say ha 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 here no I said you know I, I read the paper and uh, I'm so glad that you brought this to my attention because I learned a lot from this and uh, this whole new concept of 
of uh, uh, having uh, these articles that are uh, linked to uh, old studies and trying to data mine out of them. That's very dangerous. And so when you read uh, fraud at the CDC uncovered, you know, I want to read the papers that talk about these things. And here is uh, Snopes. Um, and you have to be careful of Snopes too. I'm just telling you, I've, I've verified some things lately and they debunked it and I looked into it and I have papers that were referee journals and from other countries that uh, confirmed the notion that that was actually a true thing and Snopes says it was false or whatever. In this case, um, the Snopes folks had uh, found that. But even so, uh, just because someone else said it, you need to know the facts yourself in order to draw a conclusion. And you can say, okay, I, I note that, but I want to look at some of the data. If, the, if it interests you enough to, to dig uh, into it, it's what I would recommend. So, um, and it's good. I think people should investigate if there are huge claims like whistleblowers and the like to dig into it. Uh, but again, I look at the science as best I can and uh, look at uh, fudge numbers or conclusions or things that are and you read it for yourself very much like that data mining thing they didn't mention so much that the patients were undergoing chemotherapy and you know for that uh, conclusion that uh, vitamins will shorten your life uh, that that's really upsetting uh, and that's why i wanted to bring it to your attention because i see it a lot actually so you can read through my slide set but um I just want you to know that a lot of times these things that happen uh, could be politically motivated and have no basis in truth and uh, even though that they may uh, result in awards and things like that uh, just look into it I, I don't have to convince you you need to convince you whatever your stance is and that's the important message I wanted to get uh, in this uh, first part of uh, the discussion of chapter one so um, their basis in this article was the CDC can't be trusted. Just because the article says that, you need to convince yourself, maybe for this topic or that topic or whatever, it's a flag. Granted, that's true. Somebody's raising doubt about something. But uh, just because this person has, has got all this dribble talking about that or this or that, these and those, verify. Um, so that's, that's sort of the uh, message in it. It doesn't have to be just on us. There's, there's things, you know, when there's ever an epidemic, uh, all of a sudden people are trying to pay, play to people's fears and, and weaknesses. And uh, uh, they're scared. And they want to alleviate the pain of being scared. So, yeah, it would be great to have a vaccine or a cure against Ebola. Uh, what a horrible virus. And we're going to talk about that. I actually have a case study on uh, Ebola. I think you might be interested in but again it's uh, the claims and products that they're talking about that may or may not be true at all green products um, read the labels on these things I'm going to show you uh, how to read labels and to do that I mean it's common sense but still there is some trickery involved and I'll point that out but um, green products really all that's doing is playing to your wanting to keep the the uh, environment clean and you're making you pay more money for something you probably can buy in something else it's the exact same product and so uh, it's marketing and some of you may be um, wanting to go into the marketing profession and that's fine I mean it's been one of a profession that's been around for a long time and it's all part of the process but as consumer you just need to ask questions and do your homework. Um, sense of weight loss product. FTC rule that senses fat burning products which claim to enhance the smell and taste of food thus making users feel full and less, eat less misled customers. The five hour energy uh, drink uh, were better than coffee and doctors recommended it. Those claims were misleading and they had to pay penalties because they really didn't have the proof although I, I um, uh, drink these things uh, uh, from, from time to time. Vitamin B is important and it, it's low in calories and probably shouldn't say that but I did. Anyhow um, and I don't really care if uh, 
uh, if it's better than coffee. I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee, so there you go. Uh, luminosity. Uh, Luminous Lab says the app would help prevent Alzheimer's disease. Uh, wow, that's a heck of a claim because we don't even really know what causes Alzheimer's. I mean, I've read articles about bacteria in gum disease can cause Alzheimer's. Uh, it could be uh, all sorts of things. And um, anyhow, uh, that's kind of silly. Uh, Wrigley, a company says it's ellipse gum with magnolia bark extract could kill germs that cause bad breath. Well, um, if they haven't done the research on that, then you can't make a claim like that. And so they, you would assume that the company's done some testing. And uh, they found that, well, maybe they didn't. And so they had to pay some penalty. In other words, you want to punish them some to make sure that they, when you put a claim on there, gosh, at least do the research, you know, that sort of thing. Activa yogurt, um, Jamie Lee Curtis, scientifically proven claims that helps regulate digestion, boosts the immune system. And, it, you know, it comes down to it. They really haven't. Uh, uh, the yogurt is supposed to be a probiotic-like effect, and they were kind of riding on that. But, no, they, they hadn't done any proof on that, so they get punished for that. Um, so be wary of products touting the FDA certification. Absolutely. FDA approved, FDA registered. Well, you know, they approved uh, some of these artificial sweeteners, and, uh, you know, one of them, in the transition itself contains no lethal products or nasty but once it gets processed by your liver it turns into a formaldehyde i mean that's just pretty obviously not good for you uh, but the fda approved it um, so but the idea is uh be skeptical always it's just really kind of having to do that and so i have an assignment that I placed in the assignment folder and I enhanced it a little bit because not only can you read about uh, cloning humans but you can also read about uh, the effects of cannabis and on the adolescent brain and you know which are the two that you might use you can read one or the other if you do both that's fine I'll give you extra credit for that uh, but it's again it's slowly getting you ready for doing case studies which we're going to do more and I think you're going to really like it I've done this uh, several times before and um, because we're online it actually plays better that way and so I hope you agree so I'm going to stop here um, and uh, go to part two at which I'll be posting uh, at a later date and uh, we'll go from there I hope you enjoyed it and uh, the other parts and things it'll be the same sort of format as we move forward on the various videos and uh, some of them will embed questions so I'll say uh, beforehand when you view it they'll have uh, questions embedded in the uh, slide set uh, but for right now our first slide I'm not going to, uh, to do that yet but uh, I plan to I think it'll help uh, reinforce as we go along okay thank you